Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to episode 162 of Titan Forge Podcast. I'm Dratnos, joined by Titles and Troll as always. And hey, hey, hey. in the bottom right corner, we have the one and Hello, only. Friends, this is Brawl. Oh, sorry. <laughs> cut off your intro. What the hell? <laughs> sorry, cut it. All right, restart. Get back to the other screen. We've got the Waffle Cat back again. We're stealing from him his uh, React content for the, this week. So sorry in advance about uh, about that. It's all right. I may react to this anyway. Oh my goodness! Yeah, <laughs> I was about to ask. The, yeah, I've seen I've seen a couple of those react chains going. Uh, I don't know how I don't know how deep any of you guys have gotten in on this, but I've seen like uh, like Max getting into like some three deep react chains. He goes deep. Max yeah. goes real deep with those. As he reacts get... to like his interview with the dev or something. I'm just like, <laughs> what? I mean, it's good. It's good content. It's nothing but content. Uh, also, congratulations are in order for uh, Trell and Growl on Slaying of the Bird. Big congrats to both of you. I think there's also some congratulations Thanks, for uh, some other stuff as well for Trell, uh, maybe. So, you know, congrats all around. Not as important for yeah. the bird, but... Yeah, the yeah. bird is pretty big. Very big. I just I also got Abyss Ring. That's Ooh. about it. Oh, wow. Wow. Nice. Is it that Brackenhide Ring? How do you know what stats are on the Brackenhide? How do you know that? Well, no, no, no. Hang on. It's a, this a, it's actually a different. So Brackenhide has a, it has like a wedding ring design that drops from it. Oh. Yeah. Okay, and no, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, yes, yeah. That's the one. I remember because I would trade it to my healer friend in my guild. Yeah, bloodied wedding ring. It's a, it's mastery verse. Is that good for you? Actually, yes. That would be this. Okay. Well, there you go. Drops from the first boss. Anyways, um. Other news that's been going on recently. There's actually been quite a bit. So, okay, I guess let me first say what we're going to talk about this week, and then we'll talk about news. We're going to talk about healing in Mythic Plus, obviously, as Growl is a Mythic Plus healer, first and foremost. Uh, boss design, answer a bunch of questions, the state of Mythic Plus kind of general, general discussion topics. So it'll be a kind of open-ended episode. In the news, there are Twitch drops as well ongoing currently. So if you are not watching this on Twitch... Uh, depending on when you're listening or watching to this, it might be a little bit late for this, but there are Twitch drops ongoing until February 5th at midnight, like the end of February 5th Pacific time. Four hours will get you a Goblin Weather Machine, so uh, it's pretty much every channel in the category as well, so a uh, very easy little little toy to get yourself. So if you're not watching this on Twitch now, maybe didn't know about this, maybe go into uh, AFK in a stream or something, pick this thing up. I think it's been super cool that they've been doing Twitch drops uh, just for like the player base as well. That plus the trading post. I mean, the trading post is also live on this patch. Um, 10.0.5, is that went live is it this week? I think it went live last week. The patch did. Last the trading week? Post, the trading post is like monthly, so it just came out now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, think that that's, I think that both of these things are super cool, that Blizzard's being more like engaged with the community, it seems like. Yeah, the trading post is a weird one because, like, I capped out on the trading post currency within like a day, and now it's and now I'm just AFK waiting for next month for the new, because uh, you can't earn any more stuff once you've earned all thousand of your tender or whatever for the month. But yeah, I kind of didn't like that because when I looked at the thing, how to earn the currency, it's like, well, you know, go fishing and go hug these NPCs and go do dungeons. And for me, my first thought was, oh, cool, like, here's just a fun random list of stuff for me to do. But the thing is, if you play the game at all, which is how they kind of designed it, you get all the currency that you need. But I kind of felt like there should have been maybe something more for someone who wants to complete everything. Maybe there is. I don't know exactly how it works, but it kind of felt like they capped it too much, like too short, you know? Like, I think the whole point of a list like that is to go out and do something that you wouldn't otherwise do when you're playing WoW, you know? Yeah, I think like like I think the fact that you cap out on how much tender you can get pretty easily and you don't feel obligated to like turbo grind the whole list is good. Like the fact that Celestial Steed is earned in a day rather than in a full month of grinding, I think that part is good. But I do think that like if there was just like a special reward at, at 50%, 75%, and hundred percent completion of that of that really long list, I think that would just go a trans long way. even just like transmogs, you know. Like yeah. nothing crazy. Like I agree, like keep the mounts easy to get. But, like, yeah. if someone really wants to work and do all the things, let them do it. Because I agree. My, my initial read, I, I was reading through the whole list, and I was like, wow, okay. Okay, that one's kind of annoying. Okay, I can do this. Like, I was planning out how I was going to do all of them. And then 
and then I was like, oh, oops, I'm already capped. Okay, I guess. Yeah, I guess I can close this thing. That is actually that is actually kind of weird. I, I would. Do you think that they should completely uncap it then? No, because I think that it's good that you, like, I think it's good that you don't. I think there should be heavy diminishing returns for going from doing like the first ten percent to the remaining ninety percent of that list, but it's okay. just like full zero rewards for doing it feels weird. Yeah, uh, seems reasonable to me. You know, something that's cool though is the freezing tech, where you yeah. can like freeze an item for next month. They should add that to the vault. I can't remember where I saw it on Twitter, but somebody tweeted about this, and I was like, I'm in for that, please. Well, they mentioned uh, coming into the expansion that they were con uh, considering having something where you could like potentially freeze your options in the vault. I wonder what happened with that. They did mention that? Yeah, that, that was mentioned in that one of the interviews. So they were talking about ways that they could potentially change the vault, and one of them was like uh, potentially maintaining items from week to week. But I mean, clearly they didn't fire that off. I wonder why. It would be a good change, though. Yeah, I think the freeze effect or whatever would be pretty intuitive for it as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. We also have some stuff going account-wide recently. We've had Primal Chaos go effectively account-wide. It's at a pretty harsh uh, rate, 60 for 80, so a little bit harsher than the Cosmic Flux and the Soul Ash and Soul Cinders conversion rates. Uh, you're losing... 33% of the of the chaos that you're sending, but it is still um, a nice way to send chaos to fresh characters, which they need for main stat gems and for spark items and for potentially for converting the primal focus and concentrated primal focus into infusions, although that still requires a lot of gameplay to also be done, and usually that gameplay will give you some of the chaos as well. But I don't know, this, this kind of leads into a question we got as well on Twitter from Tator who says... Uh, with them making Primal Chaos account-wide, there are calls for making the Foci as well uh, account-wide in some way. What are the upsides and downsides to this, in your opinion? Personally, I don't like being able to give your alts for 18 gear as soon as they ding. What do you guys think? Mm, I mean, I don't like giving my alts for 18 gear. Yeah. So the, up the upsides are like... That thing. I've already done this content, right? I've already done this content on a character. Um, it's not like you were conjuring up the uh focuses from anywhere like they're, they're not coming out of thin air rather um and and so that that's the upside of it right and you're able to get your alt that you just freshly leveled online pretty fast because it's kind of difficult once you have that like 330 character to gear up without getting a carry kind of uh, in in some ways I don't, I don't know how you guys have been feeling about gearing alts but like once you're at that 330 level to get all the way up to you know that passable level where you're getting invited to groups is a, is a bit tough. Uh, but at the same point, should you be allowed to have 418? And then I guess the downside is like, should you be allowed to have 418s immediately as you dang? I think there's not a lot of downside to it. I think the biggest uh, argument against it is the idea that, okay, I'm a healer. I do all my 16s. Now I decide I'm going to be a Windwalker monk and I make a Windwalker monk and then I'm 418 and then I'm applying to plus 20s. And it's like, but... I mean, we have Raider IO score for that now, right? Like, you can see that my dungeon score is sus, and if you decide that you don't want to play with me, even if my gear is good, then you can say no, you know? Like, I don't think I don't think item level really means that much nowadays, and if you're doing that level of content that you have it on farm where you can just give it out to your alts, I don't see why you shouldn't be able to. I think it's also good for the crafting economy, too. There would be a lot more gold going into all the crafting stuff. Like, how many people right now, if they can move it to their alts, would immediately just shove another quarter million gold into their alts and make all their embellishments and stuff? Yeah, no, I mean, I think yeah, that's so reasonable. Well, I think the big thing for me is, like, you've already done the content and you have additional uh, other resource to just, like, throw at other characters. And, like, that's the big one for me. It's, like, you've already done it. Well, so with Chaos being account-wide, you can shove over, like, 500 chaos and and five sparks instantly on your alts right and that yeah that lets you get 392s uh which is pretty good that's normal raid tier right i think the the and you can kind of see a little bit of their thought process here in this blue post it's like the reason that you lose some primal chaos in translate uh, in the transaction is we want to make sure that the best way to gear up a character should be by actually playing that character and uh. it is true like if you could send infusions the best way to gear a new character would be to do a lot of keys on your main Right, like if you're like, hey, I'm gearing my Windwalker, I'm gonna heal, you know, twenty keys and then send over gear to that character, right? Like, instead of actually playing the character that you want the gear on, 
Um, how have you guys been uh, feeling about crafted gear just generally this season with how uh, useful it is? Because in the past, we have not had crafted gear be this strong, and we sure haven't been wearing five pieces of crafted gear in a lot of slots. I love it. I think it's really nice to have like targeted stats and quite a few slots rather than just suffering with bad RNG sometimes and having like all haste mastery gear when you want crit burst, you know. I think it really helps combat that. Yeah. I will say much as I think that it makes sense to want them to have us gear up our alts by actually playing them, I do think that it is an intimidating thing on a new character, right? Looking at like 50 dungeons to get your 418s. So I th I think a middle ground that I would want to see would be like reduced cost of oh. uh, infusions on alts, like five instead of 10, something like that. Uh, once you like, if you've created five on your main, then all your alts get to do it at half price, something like that, I think would be a, a way to kind of make that a little, because right now when you do ding and it's like, okay, 50 dungeons to actually use these five sparks to their fullest potential, mm -hmm. that is a lot. I feel like I, I've heard this take before. I feel like this is a problem of the fact that it's you can see it and then it's like, oh, I want this, and then that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Because this isn't, like, in last patch, okay, like in, in previous expansions, you just don't get that, right? It's not a matter mm -hmm. of you do 50 dungeons to get Mythic Raid gear. It's, you do 50 dungeons and then you hope your guy's good enough to that your guild will let you bring it into the raid. So I feel like a, a lot, like, it feels like that because you have those sparks and you know that you can do the 20s and then you can get the gear. But I still think it's a massive improvement over anything else that we've seen before. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's fine. I, I, I it, the way it feels is weird, right? Because I, it, it's the same way with me. Like I'm, I feel like I'm playing my alts less because I know that if I wanted to play this alt, I could just do a bunch of keys and it would be huge, and then I would do high keys with it. But I don't want to do that because it's you know my dis priest or my misweaver or whatever, and then I don't play it at all. And it's like it's a weird. On paper, it's better, but as a feeling thing, it's uh, this is gray area, I guess. I will, I will say that it's been quite expensive uh, for crafting this expansion in a way that was like, dude, it, with sure. um, with like the legendary shells and stuff like that. I feel like I've spent way more money in crafting gear than I did. Man, ever I told for, like, everybody that last expansion in Shadowlands, everyone's like, "This legendary <laughs> stuff is king of win," and then they came out with the new revamped crafting system. And I'm, like, trying to explain to people, like, look, cr crafting is something that people do to make money. And if the, the more weight that goes into crafting, the more it's going to cost for people who don't want to craft. Yeah. There's no such thing as making crafting super good and then making it cheap. And everyone's like, but grow, like, it might be 5,000 gold for an item. I'm like, all right, you know, we'll see. Uh, dude. And then here we go. Where <laughs> embellishments are 100,000, all this, you know, and it's like you're spending half a million gold to gear your character. And personally, it doesn't really bother me because I'm a, you know, like a sweaty nerd that plays the game all day. But, you know, I think a lot of people also get the feeling that we might have with alts where like, oh, we don't want to put in 50 things. They might have that feeling with gold where it's like they don't even have the gold to buy all the embellishments and all the stuff that they need for their main. And then it probably feels bad because they can't get it. I've had some friends complain about the recrafting uh, a yep. lot of the time, too, because you have to for a lot of a lot of people have to provide the mats for recraft on all of their stuff. Um us in guilds, we, we normally just have somebody who has the mats and they'll recraft for us for free. But like, if you have to pay to purchase the mats for recrafting, that's also not cheap. Yeah, it's, uh, I agree. I, I mean, I do think that, yeah, like looking at it as well, it's like, it's one of those cases where you look at the crafting system and it's like, this is mythic level gear that you can get by just, by doing keys and stuff and yeah, like put insane. it in whatever slot and whatever stats. It's strong gear. Yeah. 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 And it, so like you said, it's like such a, strict upgrade to previous systems in the same way that like the catalyst is such a huge upgrade to the seasons where we didn't have a catalyst and we had deer right and That's yet example and yeah. yet both that and the crafting system like i feel like i see more complaints Fuel than bag. like appreciation about them yeah because there's like the the friction yeah i don't know i don't know if there's a good solution there i think it might just be one of those things where yeah it's maybe it is just just good as is. And, uh, I, I think overall it was good. I think it, gearing felt good. I feel like if you were playing the game, you could constantly, like every, dude, when it was Spark Week, like it felt good when it was Spark Week, oh, you know? Oh, yeah. When the you went Spark the Week and you could crap, oh, yeah. Like, dude, it feels so good. And then <laughs> on top of that, Super Loot Tuesday. <laughs> I felt like all the embellishment stuff is cool, but none of it was really that impactful. 
maybe there's some for some classes, but I, like at least in my stream, there was so much discussion about like, oh, what if you do this or oh, I got this fire hel I, I got the fire ring from the first boss. Does now I do I make this other? But I felt like it created a cool system overall. I, I think it's a pretty big win. It, the downside is the gold and stuff. It's just funny the way people play yeah. MMOs nowadays. Where if this was classic WoW, right, everyone would be like, "Oh, you gotta, you know, make gold and you gotta do this and GDKP and that." But nowadays, it's like, well, or at least in retail, it's like, well, you buy WoW tokens or you do sales. Like that's you know, like, well, yeah. A lot of my friends have bought WoW tokens. I think this is very profitable for Blizzard too. <laughs> A lot of people have bought WoW tokens for gear. Shit. Blizzard people can't be getting away with it. Eh. It's not Listen, bad. They got their, yeah. they got their expansion launch in, in Q4 bad. of 2022 like they wanted. And then they the good. made bank the off the tokens. <laughs> That's been a good expansion. I've loved it. All right, so speaking about the uh, expansion, let's move on to talking a little bit about healing in M+, which is something that there has been quite a bit of balance changes on recently as well, right? They've been buffing up some of the uh, underperforming specs in M+, which... I think is uh, is pretty good to see. I don't know, Gral, how do, what, what have you been maining recently and how have you been feeling about how good all of the different healing specs are, how interesting that the choice is? Um, I went into the expansion playing whatever my guild wanted me to play for raid and they decided rest of Druid uh, just because it fit in with what we had. And I've also been gearing Evoker because it looked really strong. I've been sort of playing them side by side. I feel like I'm enjoying Re uh, Evoker maybe slightly more just because it's new and it's different. But I like my Druid a lot, too, and it has a little bit better gear. Uh, in terms of the rest of my alts, going into the expansion, because of how crazy the game was, it felt like a lot of my... I, like, it was like, okay, Druid or Evoker is going to be the best healer. There's not even any point in playing these other guys. Now I feel like because they've been so crazy with updating, you know, changing dungeons, changing healers, I do feel like there's a lot of other classes that have merit, but I just don't have the gear on them right now. I mean, we've seen... We saw Resto Shaman with the uh, acid rain changes doing just ridiculous amounts of damage. Yeah, well, I mean, it's cool, right? It's cool to see somebody like Thaner, for example, a uh, European healer who's been playing Evoker because Evoker's good, be like, oh, wow, like, let me dust off my Resto Shaman. He played it for a week. He got all of his, you know, foci or whatever geared it up, and he's blasting and doing, like, 23, 24 keys with it. We saw Zalia playing Dis Priest with, like, the Echo Squad. I mean, he gets flamed by now a little bit because he's a Dis Priest, <laughs> but, you know, it's still very, very cool to see. You got Ellie playing uh, H Pal still. Yeah, well, I think I think H Pal's been okay. H Pal's actually been almost completely untouched for the whole. Uh, you know, I feel like H Pal is in like a perfect spot where maybe Resto Druid and Evoker needed a little bit of tuning down, and then some of the other weaker healers need a little bit up. And I feel like H Pal is kind of like right there where it can still heal everything. It just takes a little bit of effort. Yeah, I think healing was the role that I was most pessimistic about at the start of this expansion, about just like, oh, Evoker and Druid look so good compared to the field. And I, I think they've been doing a really good job of like taking the Disc Priest and the Arshamans up a couple of, of pegs. So, uh, yeah, they've been way more willing to go out. And I'm interested to see how people feel about it because they've they've done such a crazy good job of taking those lo lower specs and making them better, but not up shifting the meta yet like i feel like when they go like imagine in 1007 when they all of a sudden now resto shaman's the best healer and everybody who's been playing druid and evoker the whole season are just like uh like okay so they haven't done that yet they've done a really good job so far but the balance is tight the balance is tight to the point where it's very with some of the changes they're making where they're like you know for dis priest they're doubling the healing of radiance or like increasing their damage yeah. by 15 percent in an aura buff it's like they're pretty close with some of these changes to just, you know, ripping apart the meta, but so far they haven't done it. I think one of the big things, too, is whenever they've been nerfing some of the better better performing stuff, they haven't nerfed it out of the meta, realistically. I no, very, still... very small. I mean, yeah. they haven't yeah. touched yeah. Evoker True. at all. They haven't Prot touched Evoker at all. Really. Pro I mean, Prot Warrior, no, Prot Warrior is dead now. That 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 3% <laughs> oh, oh, block yes. value, it's it's gone. It's over. Yeah. Now they, now they nerfed. only mitigate, like, 85% of the yeah, hits, Rogues, like 90%. they only have three broken specs now. I mean, that's... Yeah, that's pretty rough. They've out been there. nerfed like five consecutive times. They're still good. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, it's hard to imagine a better balancing system though than like frequent changes that squish the outliers in, but don't actually change the order. Like that. That kind of yes, seems I, perfect. This is yeah. perfect. This is what they started to do in like season three and four, last expansion, right? Where they 
they first they they, they mistakenly over nerfed blood decay and death lock right and then they went back on it and and did a small nerf which is yeah, good blood decay was totally fine all season it was good <laughs> yeah <laughs> But they, they should have been learning. bringing okay, up they were other specs. But now yeah. they're doing both, where they're doing small nerfs and big big buffs for the bad specs, which is perfect. We love that. Yeah. But, dude, they buffed Bear. Uh, after the patch even hit, they, they completely just buffed the hell out of that Guardian Druid spec, too. Do you think this is the best that Balance has ever been in Mythic Plus? I, I'm going to say yes. It's definitely the best for DPS. Legion is great for so yes. In Legion, there was maybe like a lot of diversity, but I feel like that was because we were bad. Yeah, I yeah, didn't play Legion, but that's sucked. what I think, too. Yeah, because I think his growl really wasn't here, Legion. so the skill level hadn't been raised yet. <laughs> yeah. So, for, for a DPS perspective, yeah, it, the, like, a lot of different stuff is meta. There are a lot of factors to consider with your composition, like Lust. And... Look at how many of everything is on there, yeah, dude. But, prop but Pally, Prop yeah. War, Brew, Breast of Druid, Is that double DPS Warrior on, the, on one of those groups? Yeah. Yep. They <laughs> played, I, so, actually, I was watching that group, and they were playing double Arms Warrior, and they were rotating spell reflex on bosses that you could spell reflect, like first boss of Shadow Moon Burial Grounds. <laughs> it was pretty nutty. So, I, oh, I think yeah, for DPS, sick. it's like, I think this is definitely the best I balance mean... been for DPS. Yeah, like look at look at this. Nothing is over ten percent uh, for DPS, and there's only a couple that are like below one percent. Well, that I mean, is... Demon Hunter is the highest one, and I don't even think Demon Hunter is that out of line right now, too. Like Rogue is, yeah, I don't know. It's it's Rogue... crazy right now. It's I a think crazy the, I think world the thing with in. Rogue is that they have two. Yeah, if you add these stacks. together, it's a bit over, yeah. but yeah, that's fair. Yeah, mm. I feel like if you're not happy with the meta, it's you're never gonna either be. you play a select few specs yeah. or. You, it's more about perception now than actual balance. I mean, healer. Would, okay, so tanking it just as a general role has seen like it's pretty strong and in plus this entire expansion. You're, bare, with the exception of like guardian druid, you're pretty much able to do uh, near top level keys on any tank. What's been the situation sure. with healers though? Um. So we talked a lot about tuning, but another really big thing that they did with healers is they nerfed the shit out of a lot of really really hard bosses. So. <laughs> In so basically in BFA, if you remember, there was like only playing Resto Druid, and that was just because like you needed battle res. You didn't have battle res, you needed to bring Resto Druid, it was also a good healer. After that, and like throughout Shadowlands, it sort of came to this point where every like you just bring the healer that does the most damage because you know every healer can heal the dungeons, just bring the guy that does the most damage. And a lot of people complain about that. They're like, well. I don't really like this meta. I don't like, you know, pick the damage healer. A healer is supposed to be able to heal. Why don't we bring the healer that has the most healing? Well, at the beginning of the expansion, we saw why you don't want that. Is because you get to the point where, okay, you're not healing this boss with this priest. You're not healing this with the rest of the shaman. You're not healing this with Miss Weaver. And it comes to a point where you literally can't physically heal a boss because you need the highest throughput healer. And if all balance was perfect that would be the case. So yeah, early on it was only Evoker and uh, pretty much uh, Druid could heal stuff. I mean, a Paladin could too, sort of. And then you didn't play any of the other four healers. Yeah. Now, because they toned down some of those fights that were really, really hard, well, now you can sort of bring a Dis Priest. You can sort of bring a Holy Priest. You can bring a Resto Shaman. Is it ideal? No. Are, are you going to struggle with some bosses? Yeah. But you're at least able to physically heal it. Okay, so I, I think this makes I think this makes a lot of sense, and it puts all the healers kind of similar in line. Where tanks, obviously, you only have one per group, so you're going to migrate to the best. But realistically, you can kind of flex in whatever. Something that I actually thought you hit on really well is the healing checks on bosses. We saw some people talking about Blizzard gutting healing checks and how they shouldn't have been nerfing these bosses. What did you end up thinking about that? Because this is something that we saw probably like four or five weeks ago. Blizzard really started taking the hammer to some of these bosses. Um, there was a take that you guys had, I think, on an early podcast. It was suddenly along the lines of, it was about a JB tweet, and JB was one of the people who was like, oh, this, you know, they, finally, I'm at the point now where I can flex my skill as a healer, but now they nerf everything, and it's like, well, healing is one person in the group for the most part, and there is a little bit of stuff that other people can do, but for the most part, it's one one person in the group. Can you really design an entire dungeon set where it flexes JB's ability to show that he's better than another healer who's like rank 100 
and still have it even be doable by an average civilian who's just walking in who's not that familiar <laughs> or someone who's playing with their their alt spec to help their guild with a weekly 20 or whatever like these people would just get blown out of the water by these dungeons so personally yeah. again i liked it it was incredibly fun to play some of these dungeons pre-nerf and like really min max all of your healing potential but it's just not something that's reasonable Another thing I think that there's a really huge difference in is I think a majority of like the average player base and also Blizzard is really into like being able to finish the dungeon because not everyone is like doing a 24 key where they're trying oh, to time do. it. If most people want to finish the dungeon and they want to get their gear, even if they don't time it, it's like, That's well, true. at least we got something for this, right? And the problem with these healing checks that. is you can literally assemble a team of people and you're never going to kill this boss. It doesn't matter how many hours you sit in here. Yeah. You're never going to kill this boss with this person that you've selected. Raging Tempest healer. week two. How many, right. you, exactly, how many right? week one Algathar Academies did your guys go? Oh, have? the tree. Oh, my the God. Tree dude, the tree boss, my Twitch chat was, they were... In, they didn't know what to do about the tree uh, boss. My, so guild I think that's a, my guild didn't know what to do. <laughs> that's a big problem with having these really hard healer bosses is you can't finish the dungeon. Yeah. Maybe, again, maybe you need to revisit the, like, uh, what was it, the buff that you got What's at the Omdi? end of the yeah, yeah. Before, now it's like you can reset your lust or whatever, but before it was like you would get a damage buff or whatever. So I think if they ever wanted to consider making those really hard healer bosses again, they need to revisit Ooh. the idea of, well, if they deplete this key, let's just give them God mode. But then it's like that opens up more problems that they didn't like. But, so, yeah. But we don't I think we I liked it. Please. I like the hard bosses, but I think it's a necessary thing that they nerfed a lot of them. So with the God mode thing, we actually don't get score past plus 20 anymore for depletes, which I mean, it could open up the avenue for some of the more God mode like stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it, I mean, it had some problems. Like, for example, let's say you it did get, have some you somehow get a Shadow Moon Burial Grounds 20, and then now you have 20 keys, and now you do these, like, incredibly... Ra like, we used to do these ratty sales at, in BFA, where you would have, like, four alts, and you would have somebody buy the key, and then you would just run it down into the first pack until it was depleted. Oh my god, Just to there? get the buff. <laughs> and we would, yeah. We would, yeah, and we would be selling that. these keys to people, and you would, it would just be, like, 150 deaths or something, and it would just... It is just not good gameplay, so Holy I understand crap, I totally why they got rid of that. that. Yeah, you remember that? We had, that we had so some funny. special underrots. In, uh, Dude, under I remember 20s. getting corpse camp to the first pack of a tall bazaar. <laughs> we would just, we would kite the trash back to the first pack, or the first, like, uh, checkpoint, and we just, like, chain die to it. <laughs> you had, like, yeah. 300 deaths in, like, a minute. It's funny. I've uh, done that this expansion say... to reset Lust in Ruby Life Fools. It's not as good. It's not as good. <laughs> I, I will say, say one it. one major downside to that uh, as a last thought to the the nerfs though, it did create some problems in that. So for example, Court of Stars. The way I would describe Court of Stars before now is the last two bosses are really tough, and the yeah. whole point of the dungeon is being able to cover all the the profession stuff, getting to the bosses clean with your cooldowns, having your bloodlust, and successfully killing the bosses. Now, what is Court of Stars? That's a dungeon where it's like, you. I mean, if you have a pulse, you make it through the dungeon and you time it. And I feel like dun the older dungeons that had those, like, nothing and then into really tough bosses kind of fell apart with the nerfs because it's like, well, what is even Court of Stars as a dungeon now? What are you supposed to yeah. do? That is certainly an issue of Court being too easy as opposed to necessarily, like, the boss is not needing a nerf, though. Well, but yeah. Especially the last boss was... A tough boss for pug i think the second boss was cool i love like i think i think bosses like the last boss of quarter stars or yeah. like the noka defensive elemental that require a lot of coordination and like defensives i think those could get nerfed bosses like the second boss of court were just like a raw sort of like patchwork healing thing i think are still cool though i don't remember I if they boss, nerfed yeah. second boss but yeah exactly. I, I like the patchwork stuff but anytime it requires coordination to beat and it's a super hard healing boss. It's like that's yeah. gonna be a pug nightmare. It, it's well, it's think... weird because Raging Tempest actually, which is which is the Elliot in Knockhood, it had so many people complaining about it, but it was like re in reality, like the top end groups were still able to get it done because they knew like how to make sure your healer was maintaining their buff permanently and and making sure that they were mm -hmm. able to get like stacks refreshed and stuff like that. It's actually a very interesting fight. Well, I think Court's a hard problem to fix too because I hear all the time from the the newer players this expansion. That court is just like insanely hard because they don't know all the random details about what you should know about that dungeon, you know. 
And so like, it's either really hard if you don't know what's going on, or it's really, really easy if you do know everything like we do. And so it's like, how do you fix that? I think the, yeah. what they did with the Jade Temple stuff, where they just add a bunch of trash and made the, the stuff harder, but removed the, the easy parts, like the RP, where you just waited two minutes. I think that was perfect. I don't know what they could do for Court or Shadow Moon to the same degree, yeah. but... Maybe that's fair. Okay, maybe I'll take back a little what I said about Court because earlier th uh, last week, I got him, or maybe it was this week, I got invited to a plus 23 court sale. And I'm like, okay, this should be fine. Like, we have a good team. The buyer was the tank. And <laughs> oh, we load into the dungeon. Yeah, and he's like, tough. okay, guys, where do I go? And that dungeon, that was one of the tougher yeah, how do you courts explain that, that I've done. We, we did not time that key. That was a very difficult key. <laughs> So uh, make sure you is, walk exactly having, on this pixel. Knowing, where, you yeah, pull knowing where all the stuff is and how to navigate the packs and how to not pull. I can see all the way up to 20 that court's actually a pretty reasonable challenge for most people. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's an interesting dungeon because it has so much of its difficulty loaded into a few small things that would get completely trivialized if you actually had the, like the knowledge about them. And then that boss was the only thing that was like difficulty right. loaded that you couldn't just like out knowledge and even that you could knowledge pretty well if you were baiting well and uh had dps using defensives and stuff but uh yeah someone calling stops and kicks yeah that's yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually kind of hard is, all that pressing your cc is nuclear difficulty if uh if you're in an uncoordinated group yeah i i do think it's a i agree with you though growl that like it's fun to play the pre-nerf versions but you look at them and you're just like this this, this can't stand for the 15 yeah. key group yeah. right like that it's got to change. Yeah. So yeah, I, I also wanted to add to that is is even though we were talking about healers specifically, I think it's important to note that like early in the season, tanks and DPS, you have to play like the tankiest DPS possible because the DPS aren't going to live raging tempest if they're not a rogue with faint every fifteen seconds or whatever too. You know, like uh, some classes were just banned in twenty ones plus for yeah. That's a great point. Weeks. Actually, we were talking about how good the DPS balance was, but that was not the case in the first two weeks. So that's yeah. actually a great point that I think the boss, it's actually crazy that that was how high difficulty the bosses were, is it limited which DPS you could play, yeah. not exactly. based off of their damage, yeah. but based yeah. off of how they could live. So like, even though it was, it was really cool that healers could heal that much, like the dungeons are just straight up in a better state now after these nerfs, like they're just what better designed at this point. Yeah, I, I kind of feel, it kind of feels like mythic rating as well, right? Where it's like, it was fun to fight these bosses pre-nerf, but like, the nerfs landing and landing as early as they did. You can't look at that as anything other than like, okay, okay. that's good. Next season, there will be something ridiculous that I can prog pre-nerf and, and try and beat as well. And, uh, you know, that's the fun, right? I, I want to call it a really good change. The fact in Azure Vault and Halls of Valor that they are looking to nerf this dungeon without like uh, just buffing up the timer, instead going in and like they nerfed the frog HP in Azure Vault, which is effectively just like nerfing yeah. the timer because those mobs didn't really do that much. Or like they they took away a little bit of the RP on Scovald and HOV and kind of sped that up that way. Those those the way that they are nerfing the dungeons without just directly hitting the timer, I feel like are very smart nerf. That's a good point. Remember remember back in BFA when they said in a post that they didn't want to make forty two minute dungeons anymore, and then they buffed the KR timer to forty two minutes. <laughs> and and like DOS as well. Later. The dungeon yeah. is just yep. the <laughs> KR was just bad, man. That was just a bad dungeon. <laughs> Yeah, this new philosophy is way better though. Like, uh, they've gotten the yeah, there's a, a lot of little things too. So, one thing that I actually thought you were going to say about Azure Vaults and Halls of Valor was the speed buff. So, Holy one of the shit. comments we Ooh, made about too. Azure Vault being too big, and okay, is it still too big? Yes, you know, is there still too <laughs> walk? It's too much walking around. Yes, but if you yeah. res, you get a speed buff for 40 seconds or whatever that ends in combat. And honestly, some of the strats people have been doing in Halls of Valor with the speed buff, like, make the dungeon feel different. And I feel like they, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know how to word it any other way, but it really feels like they care. Like they're really sitting down and thinking about like, oh, that's just not global nerf the timer. You know, they're really sitting down and thinking like, how do I make this dungeon better and like make it more accessible for people and not like breathe the timer or whatever. Something Matt Viller said in his uh, interview with Nagura that I thought was really interesting. He was talking about specifically, like, uh, he thought that what made a good M0 dungeon makes a good M plus dungeon. And I actually do agree that that is the case for a lot of things. But there are some parts of M plus dungeons that just, like, they war they fly on it for, like, an M0 experience. But then they're just, like, kind of annoying in M plus. And you're like, uh, I don't necessarily want it to exactly be like this. And, and, like, in particular, like, the speed buff in Halls of Valor. And in M0, 
I don't really need a speed buff because I'm only doing the dungeon once. But in an M plus, it's like, God, this is so much travel time to to replay this dungeon over and over again. This speed buff actually makes a world of difference. Yeah, I love that. All right, I want to pivot a little bit uh, and go back a little bit to talking about healing specific stuff. And I guess this is not only a healer question, but uh, it's one that I've been thinking a lot about this expansion, which has been about the talent tree rework. Uh, and so how has that felt for you, Growl and M+. Like, I guess my question is, have you been enjoying, like, customizing your talents? Have you been doing different builds or having different ideas in different dungeons? And how much mastery have you, like, front-loaded into Evoker and Druid now that, like you said, if they change the balance next time, like, how how big of a learning curve do you think this is going to add to new seasons and new metas? You know, don't tell don't tell the chat and don't tell the YouTube comments this, but there's actually not one best talent build for every single dungeon in every single scenario. I know they want it bad. The one master build. And whenever I change a talent from dungeon to dungeon, they're like, oh, is this better now? Did they buff this talent? And it's like... <laughs> so personally, I really like it because it lets me cater. And there's been lots of instances of this in the past too. It's not just this, right? It's anything that you could switch before. Azerite, ta Azerite armor, yeah. essences, your legendary, your conduits. There was tons of things your you covenant. could switch before. Your Azerite armor, <laughs> yeah, the low, low price of a doubling cost every 500,000 gold, yep. Yeah. So I do like that. Um, some... It, it's another one of those situations where how it felt might not be the same. So, for example, Shaman is a class that has, like, this giant toolkit of all these different totems and stuns and hex and this. And so what happened when they made the tree is the tree was giant and it has all the things that you already have. And it's like, well, you know, you're, all right, which things do I have to lose? Really, that's what you're thinking when you're building the Shaman tree is what do I have to lose? Whereas when you play Evoker, you've never had an Evoker tree before. And Evoker is like, oh, what do I want? Do I want two charges of hover? Or do I want to get be extra tanky? Or do I want to bring the damage one? And it's like, it's sort of the same thing in both regards, but it does kind of feel bad in some of, in some of the classes just because there's so many things that you already had. But it looks like they're doing a good job in iterating in that. In 1005, they changed some talents. In 1007, they've already announced that they're changing more talents. And part of that is... Specifically with Shaman, they're actually removing some of the talents, giving them you ba giving them to you baseline, and then, okay, here now here's your points. So it, I like it. It's cool. I can see if you're a more casual player, it might be a bit overwhelming, but at the same mm -hmm. time, like, whatever, then don't min-max it, you know? Grab the wow head build and go, and don't worry about it. That's, I, I think, the only thing that I wonder a little bit is if you want to be a casual person that you know doesn't worry too much about it and you don't want to think too hard about your talents then why are you thinking so hard about it you know like just grab a build and run and don't care like just like what we would do on one of our alts right like i'll just take my crappy alt i'll bring the same build to every dungeon i'll bring that build to raid like who cares Ooh. you know it's like dude I, i've been doing one worse than the wowhead i've been taking the wowhead build and then i've been like this is too many active abilities and i've right clicked oh, yeah, the a couple of them and left clicked a couple of passives yeah like summon white tiger statue that is really an annoying button i don't yep. want that one <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm right clicking that thing i was actually Exorcism. watching a guide for evoker and they had a lowest keybind build that was one of their builds. I'm like, that's good. That's actually kind of a good <laughs> yeah, idea. Yeah, that is sick. Yoink. And the rest of Druid needs that. Uh, I totally agree with Growl, though. Like, uh, I think the the fact that some classes lose some of their base abilities because they can't really afford to get them in their talent tree anymore. Like, for a monk, I can't even take speed taunt ever on any any build. It's just not worth it. I just don't have speed taunt anymore. Like, that feels bad. Yeah. But I think there are lots of steps forward that they are taking, and I think the talent system is going to end up being really, really good pretty soon i think the iteration I, is the most most exciting part but yeah it, it, right now it's like oh warriors used to be able to fear immune right but now warriors can't fear immune because you're never taking that talent even if there's a dungeon with a fear like uh, you're never taking that thing i guess maybe if they made a future dungeon where it was like uninterruptible or something maybe but well it yeah. just have to be super important right to take yeah that. and it, so it's i like, have to have something like key breaking to take speed taunt yeah uh, otherwise i'll just never take it uh, yeah that's yeah. like one of the best examples for shaman too is tremor totem it's like well yeah. How many times do you use Tremor Totem in a dungeon? Maybe one time. Does it feel really good as a shaman when you get that Tremor Totem off and you stop that fear cast? It feels amazing and you kind of rob yourself of that feeling when it's like, well, what am I going to bring? I'm going to take this talent point for a thing that I'm only going to use one time in the whole dungeon or like Hex, for example, too. Like you actually have the yeah. talent into Hex. 
Like, are you really going to waste a point on Hex? But sometimes it's like, oh, no, this patrol's walking into us, and I Hex it, and it's like, wow, we, I might have actually just saved the key, or let me Hex this really long cast that my team is AFK sleeping because they're zombies, you know? It's like, but I think you kind of get robbed of those really niche utility scenarios of classes like Shaman, for sure. I will say that it does feel like, on average, more more classes have more utility. And in addition to that, they have the ability to be able to do, like, uh, damage healing or tanking profiles that match the level of con or the type of content they're doing. Whereas before they were kind of, there were some classes that just by design were better at doing uh, cleave damage while still maintaining the high amount of single target damage. Whereas now most classes are able to talent into some build that you get a decent amount of single target while also maintaining some level of cleave. Speaking of extra utility, how do you feel about all the extra utility and kicks that healers have now, Growl? So, I remember at the beginning of the expansion, everyone was like, oh, wow, why don't I get a kick as a healer? All the priests were like, why don't I have a kick? I don't get a kick in my tree. And all the druids were like, wow, the kick is so hard to get. How do you even get this kick? It's, like, buried so hard. And then Blizzard is like, okay, let's make this kick easier. Let's fit it in. Let's add some more connectors. And the druids are like, eh, yeah, I don't really, I don't really want that kick. No, no, never mind. I'm not going to take it. It's like, well, I mean... Personally, I again, as a higher-end player, like I like having the option, and it adds some flexibility to your team, but it is an added responsibility that can sometimes, that your role is not used to, you know? A lot of healers are not used That's to true. having those kicks, and so and again, yeah. at a high end, I think it's cool. I think it's great that I can roll into a pug, and then I'm like, oh no, yeah. like my team is Shadow yeah. Priest, Demo Lock, and it's like, I need, I really need to have a kick in this dungeon, let me just skill it. Um, as a as a Moonkin player, the, the healer having a kick helps me out a lot. <laughs> well, I mean, on the reverse, though, so I played with a Moonkin the other day, and it was like a 20 no-good pug. Yeah. And I realized within the second pull that the, the Moonkin also had Skull Bash. So it was the explosive week, and the Moonkin was in a pug, killing explosives, playing Beam and Skull Bash at the same oh time. Oh, my gamer. And I'm just thinking, like, dude, this guy is the pug master. Like, he's just out here just like, I don't care about my team. I'm just doing everything, and it's like it's cool that people tag? can play like that. Like it's actually, I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, advise any builds or anything. But it's like I bet that guy had a decent success rate in pugs. The fact that he can take on that responsibility and do it, for sure. Uh, I was gonna say on the other end, from the tanking side, I love how much utility healers have now. Like just the whole group seems like any, any comp I have just has like twice the AOE stops as before because in the new talent trees, and then having a healer kick most of the time is just so nice. All right, our next question comes from uh, from Twitter, from Rain, who says, are mana restoring seasonal affixes important for healer balance in M+, and is it more healthy for M+, at all levels when healers need to heal more uh, or contribute to DPS more? We already talked about the DPS healing trade-off thing, but I guess the... Uh... The part that we haven't talked about yet is mana restoring seasonals. Growl, do you have a, a take on, on those? Um, I'm not going to speak for Blizzard, but you know, let's just say hypothetically, it seems like what they did was they said, oh, let's have seasonals give mana back and sort of like make the pace of the game go faster in Shadowlands. Every single seasonal was a way to get mana back in Shadowlands. Mm -hmm. One thing that does is it th sort of throws off the balance and it throws off some of the way healers play. For example, when you have a talent that, as a shaman, mana spring totem, well, that talent, you know, that's sort of a dead talent because it's something that you have to think about and is useful in all other parts of the game, but now in M+, because you have a seasonal affix that gives you a bunch of mana back, now this is a dead talent and this is a dead talent. And it's like, mana balance from character to character is part of the balance of the character. That's like part of the way you play healer. Is it, the problem is, okay, four, four people yeah. out of the five people, don't give a crap about your mana. They do not want mana to exist. They want to go into every dungeon. The healer has infinite mana. Just shut up. Don't drink. Don't stop. Like, it just, it's a weird thing. Like, as a healer, it's a fun way to express your skill to be able to manage your mana so that your team can go, go, go. But when you're a fury warrior and you're you're looking and your stupid priest is sitting there and he has 1% mana and you're just like, sitting on your cooldowns, you're just like sitting there with your arms folded, like staring <laughs> at him like, okay, buddy. And then he's not even drinking because, you know, he's whatever. And he's just a random priest. He's just standing there. And it's like, you know, I feel like I can understand both sides of it. As a healer, I appreciate that they want to not give mana for free and they want to make it a part of the game. I can also understand why 
well, let's just give everyone mana because this is boring for everybody else. So I don't know. As as uh, again, as a healer, I kind of like that they're imp- making the mana important. The only thing they need to do is be careful because, for example, Evoker right now, right? Evoker is great damage, really solid healer, tons of utility, and for some reason it has infinite mana, right? Yeah. Like, if anything, yeah. it should be some of the healers, you know, like that's a trade-off that some healers have, like, oh, Dis Priest is not the best healer, but it has infinite mana and you never have to stop, and hopefully you could, you know, and you can make up the time. And kind of what they've done is they're now buffing the crap out of the other healers so that they don't need mana as well. It's kind of the direction that they're going, so... Again, it adds another complexity to the way that they balance healers. And so if they do a good job with it, then I don't think mana has to be a part of the seasonal, but it is kind of a... I'll say this, maybe have one season every expansion where the seasonal just gives you a shit ton of mana and it lets you go, 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 and that's another way to sort of change the way that it feels. But I think having every single seasonal give mana probably is not a good idea. The only thing that's ever been weird for me is the lack of parity that you talked about between the healers, not some of them just like not having to stop and drink and then some of them like literally running out of mana every three trash packs or whatever. Yeah, because it, it does yeah. often feel like the healer, it's often like a rich get richer type thing where it's like, oh, this healer has good mana and good healing and like Disc Freeze can't do either, right? And that's like been, I'm not saying that's that's how it is now, but like there's been several expansions where that's kind of been how it's felt uh, for some of the specs. Yeah. So yeah. All right, let's do uh, let's do tips of the week. My tip of the week is thundering comes with a slow immune. Now we I think we've covered this a little bit. We've mentioned it before, but this is actually really really big on a couple of boss fights, uh, and it's also useful on some trash pulls. But just being aware that whenever thundering is going to proc, you're going to get a, a slow immune can be really big. Using this intentionally on the last boss of Azure Vault again, I do think we we maybe talked about this uh, before, but. I want to especially call it out as the best way to deal with that boss, especially on Tyran, is to do a big move in the first five seconds of your thundering while everybody in your group is slow immune and you can uh, you can just get wherever you want to go freely there. So a little, little piece of tech with the thundering affix. Oh my god, dude, since our last uh, since our last podcast episode, they actually changed thundering, right? To yeah, always uh, target go in the tank. Yeah, because we missed last oh, week. Yeah. yeah, so that was two weeks ago. Um it's weird as well, because it's like, it always goes on the tank, the the three, right? And now if one player's dead, you get like three negative, one positive. It's, uh, at least I'm in addition to that, that. I don't yes. know. In, in addition to that, they changed it to where you don't have to clear on like dead bodies now, right? That's what somebody was telling me. I've also seen it just like sometimes some player a player has had both negative and positive if somebody's been dead as well. So I think I yeah, think the the that. tank forcing stuff is has thrown a couple of wrenches into the rest of it if somebody's dead. Well, well, the intention uh, the dead the dead not having to clear on their corpse thing is actually a really good change. Yeah, that is very good. I agree. I but, think all of it was super good. Like the the tank being a consistent negative mark just allows the option to where if someone's stuck in a bad situation, they just always know where the negative mark's going to be without having to look at a weak aura, which is which is how it should be probably. And I I mean all the other stuff that you just said is perfect too. That's all that's what we were all asking for this whole time. All right, Trell, what is your tip of the week? Uh mine's about purges in Ruby and No Code because I don't think there's any important purges in other dungeons that I can think of, but these two have a bunch of purges. Uh so in Ruby the chill weavers have shields that you can purge off. The Earth Shapers usually before you stop their Seismic Slam or whatever it's called. The Cinder Weavers up top buff themselves and, and attack super fast until you purge them. It's also a really good one. You can also purge the Flame Dancers as they die, and it'll stop their like on death spinning animation, which is just like a safety measure, honestly. And then the very last Tempest channel or mini boss. If you purge all the little guys that he summons right before he does his shield move, then he just doesn't have a shield at all. That's a pretty good one. And then in Nokud, the only ones I wanted to mention was the Raging Tempest boss that we've talked about a lot today. If you purge that on CD, if you have a Demon Hunter or something, then he just does like half the tank damage that he would otherwise. Oh, and then, really? Yeah, that thing is insane. That buff he has. It like, I didn't, I didn't it's attack speed it and off. like damage amp, right? Yeah. Yeah, it buffs his attack speed and it, it gives him like a nature damage hit on the tank at the same time, every every hit. Yeah, so my tip of the week is if you're a mage, you can spell steal that buff, and then you can smack it with the staff. How it's much damage does it do? Oh, really? It does kind of some damage, but then you're stuck smacking the boss with your staff. 
Yeah, is, is it better is it than uh, uh, Arcane Blast? Is the question. Uh, well, I don't. I think they're playing Frost now. Well, so then it would be better. Yeah. <laughs> is it better than Frost Bolt? Hmm. Got a great question. There's also there. Yeah, there's some good stuff you can spell steal in some of the dungeons. There's like a big shield as well. Uh, somewhere, right? Is that Knocket as well? Or is that? Oh, uh, no, that's in Shadow Moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You could spell steal that shield. Yeah. There's yeah, one yeah, in Knocket. So the so the patrols, it's like five little Ellies that go around in the second boss room. You can oh, steal all two. the shields yeah. and get like a five million shield for the yeah. boss. I forgot about that, yeah. And then the only other one we haven't mentioned is the uh, just something like an AOE purge. It's pretty good for like the undead area of no good. If, if the Risen Mystic gets its cast off, then you can just purge off the buff it gives. Yeah, that area, I, I see a lot of people react weirdly to the big green circle swirly as well. The uh, Chant of the Dead thing, because that's like a 10 year cast time and people get out of it like insta and leave the mobs kind of scattered. So I, I think, uh, well, like getting a timer for how long that cast is and standing in for a little bit longer would be a good habit to get into on that. And then also when it explodes, it applies a damage taken and done in rage to all the mobs that it hits. So if you're a tank and you're not dying and you're not in danger there, keeping all the mobs in that is uh, going to speed you up. Realistically, you want to get the mobs out of them because is it damage because taken they... or damage reduced? It's damage reduced. So is they it damage have a twenty percent dr? Yeah, they get a wall. From oh, okay. Well, yeah. Don't do what, do what I said. Do the opposite of what I said. <laughs> yeah, everything yeah. does there. what you said anyway. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well then, I've been we I've were... been I've been bricking my keys for fun. <laughs> we were consider we were considering taking the evoker AOE uh, enrage suit because every single time they get the oh, dr. Yeah, it's like, oh god, it's. I think I think it's the move because twenty percent dr on a whole pack is a huge time loss, it, and it stacks. It, if you have two, if you have two death speakers, they stack up to two stacks. I saw it on my vod yesterday. That happened a couple times. Oh no! And I was like, oh damn, they had a forty percent dr for like half. Dude, a I, I thought I dude. I've, yeah, I've been. <laughs> he's questioning all of the keys he's done this season. I've been trolling a little bit in some knock and defenses. Keeping man. them all in there. I've been. Uh, oh wow. <laughs> I trolled some keys, you guys. In my chat. There's one guy in my chat that agrees with Dragnos. That well, says it's damage taken. So maybe, I've looked he at might, the, maybe he might be right. I've looked at the wow head here, and it's not looking particularly good for me. So <laughs> well, I don't know. All right. Well, yeah. You live and you learn. Oopsie. Yeah, don't don't that don't use that as the tip of the week. Do not take them with that thing. Get them out of the chance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Tettles. What is your clip of the week? Oh, it's it comes from Growl, dude. I. I was looking, I was looking around for clips of the week, and I found this one on Growl's uh, Twitch page. I was like, "Holy shit, this is incredible tech!" Do we want? The, I don't uh, die audio, in this club, do I? Or is this uh, just uh, okay? So ignore, just just hit what? play. We're we're gonna ignore the first part. Uh, oh, it was <laughs> well, it was unavoidable. It? it was unavoidable. He got griefed. Okay, he got he got griefed. Look, he he actually sacrificed his life to keep the rest of his group alive, and he reset their grief torches, so this is fine. The most important part of this uh, comes at the back half of this. Watch him scale this tree. I didn't even know this was possible, by the way, until I saw this clip. And then he glides over, uses hover to get on this lip, and he traverses the wall to get back over. Wow. Yo, but what the hacking to the evade tech dragon is this? That's really good. Your chat and just like tell you, yo, growl, I think I got something. He would just jump around the hole. You can climb all the way to the top of the, the, the pyramid thingy, the temple. The demon hunter. All right, and then uh, Growl, you have brought in for show and tell another yep, clip. Yeah, I was actually thinking of using that clip, and then I I brought an extension of a clip. This is another okay. evoker skip. You can do this in different dungeons. You can basically ignore Z axis with deep breath. Um, this is one example where you can do it. For example, if your team wipes and you're running back to res, if you jump on this little pillar, you can double jump and then you can deep breath across Z axis oh. to get to lower areas. I and this I've is seen... not the only dungeon I think you can do this in, but I'll let you guys explore where you think you can. I, I've seen people do it in Jade Serpent to jump off of the, the railing. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. It's the only one I know. That's really cool. All right. Uh, let's, I guess we've got a couple of more topics to cover. Maybe we'll just roll this into Q&A as well. Uh, Good. At, for this too. So uh, I'll, I'll bring the Q&A up into, into this area as well, but... I guess let's uh, let's talk a little bit about one of the other changes that's happened recently, which was the depleted score change. We referred to this earlier uh, a little bit, but you now no longer get bonus score for going higher than a 20 if the key is depleted, uh, is basically how it works. I was a pretty big fan of this change because I did not enjoy the meta of time the junkyard, deplete whatever it turns into, 
you know, keep rolling for more junkyards, time the junkyard, deplete whatever it turns into type thing. Yeah. Two chests the junkyard, deplete whatever it turns into. Uh, and that being the correct way to, like, get Shrouded Hero, uh, or the easiest way to get Shrouded Hero, the least skill-intensive way. And I was worried that, especially with Court of Stars and Burial Grounds in the pattern, we would see a very similar uh, meta for the Path of Least Resistance to Thundering Hero. Uh, how have you guys felt about depleted 20s, or depleted hierarchies no longer giving extra score? I didn't lose that many points. I lost. I, I think I lost the most points out of people that I know at like 25 or something like that. Most people I know in our range only lost like, you know, 10 to 20 points because um, we, we don't normally have a lot of depletes on our score sheet is the big thing, right? Speak for yourself. Yeah, speak for yourself. I, I had I had almost half. Out of how, many, how, how many points did you lose? Though. Uh, I mean, not did that you, many, right? Because okay. the second best option is like, you know, a yeah. half of a key level below it or yeah. whatever, but. It's like three points lower. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's actually like 10 dungeons if it's like 30 points. Big. But it, I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal. I think going forward, it's going to be nicer. So we avoid the junkyard problem. I think the fact that they picked 20s as the point at which this starts is actually super smart too, because it's not impacting your ability to be able to get like weekly keys done. It's also not impacting your ability to be able to get like 2400 realistically, which is the uh, score you need for Valor upgrades. And so I think that that was actually a really smart decision for them to put it um, and rolling it back at 20s because then you're not having people with a lot of depletes on your scorecard. Because one of the big things that we saw earlier was like, it, for some reason, key depletes gave you one key level lower in time level of score, which I thought was ridiculous. I, I did not like that. that. Something about that felt wrong. Yeah, I think I understand why they have that, especially for lower keys, because you don't necessarily do you don't do all the plus threes and then all the plus fours and all the plus fives, you know, but like getting those big gains early on are good. And like, I think it's fair if you, you know, have a rough group, but you finish out a 12 that you get the points that you get for a 10, because technically you could have done a 10 with that group. Right. But that's not really the same. Like that decision is not the same when you're doing a plus 24, because the example that I always use is like, well, let's say you have, you're at the end of the dungeon. You have one trash pack that takes one minute and then a boss that takes three minutes, and you have three and a half minutes on the clock. It's like, well, the point of the game is that you have to pull that trash back with that boss or do something. Like You have to figure something out. The point of the game is not, well, you know, says, you know I guess we deplete this. You know, The timer's there for a reason, and it's there to change the way that you play in the dungeon. And so I think the fact that you can just say, yeah, it's depleted by 30 seconds, so let's just get our you know 99% of the points, I don't think is good gameplay. And it robs you of those situations where you pull the trash pack with the boss and lust, and it's like, oh my god, and everyone's running everywhere, and you kill it, and the, the chat's pogging out, and then you time it by two seconds. Like, when you reward yourself too much for failing, then it robs you of those cool moments where you wouldn't have taken that risk. Mm -hmm. One thing I really like about it is they separated, they sort of like drew a line where it's like, okay, you know, these are people who are just gearing up. They may not even be caring that much about the Mythic Plus system and trying to time keys and go fast. They might just be trying to gear up their characters in dungeons. After 20s, now you are do you are engaging in the Mythic Plus system. And I feel like they need to keep doing more changes like that, where it's like, well, let's not ruin the game for people who are trying to do dungeons and get gear, but also make the game better for people who like Mythic Plus. So, like, a, one thing I don't want to suggest is, but people talked about key depletion. And it's like when you're, you know, trying to get your weekly 15 and then some guy leaves in the first trash pack and now you have a 14 and no one wants to play with you, that feels really bad. And it's like, but you shouldn't remove key depletion for people trying to push keys in like 23s, uh, 24s. There's some I, sort of middle ground where I think they should consider changing the way Mythic Plus works at some level. I, I hard agree about this key depletion thing because like for for people who are just pugging i think pugging keys primarily is like the big difference and the key range that is puggable is you know nor somewhere like around the 20 ranges where keys really stop becoming puggable obviously you do see people some people in lfg doing 21s 22s 23s but that realistically lfg isn't necessarily like great for doing that um but yeah like the deplete system for them is so tough whereas for us like if we didn't have depletes we would have you would just run into the situation where you're TR pulling the first pull of a dungeon over and over again until you have like this one time where it goes successful. You're like Literally triple pulling, TR. triple pulling the first pull of knock hut or some shit, right? Like it's something like unreasonably hard. And you're like, okay, well, eventually we're going to get one pull where it goes right. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's tough because like there are some people that authentically prefer the TR experience and are arguing for it like on Twitter, and I, only I just JD. think that's a, yeah, I think it's a pretty small minority of people that actually would prefer that, and I think there are people that think they would but don't. Uh, like I will, I will call those people out. Actually, there's a lot of people that say that they want to redo keys over and over again. Look, Tournament Realm is open for half of the year. You can sign up for it and you can do that all you want, but you don't because it's it, not fun. It don't, is not fun. Don't be on Twitter <laughs> telling everyone, like, J, at least JB suffers through the MDI prison. He's allowed to have that take. But if you're like, oh, I would love to just practice no good 2,500 times in a row, well, then do it. Like, you can do it. You don't because, and people say, oh, there's like, you know, hurdles or whatever you have to go to. But I mean, if, if it was really that good of an idea that they should implement it on live servers, then surely somebody would be on TR, but it's the literally nobody. It's literally only the top MDI teams on TR ever. It's just a, a graveyard. I mean, dude, them and their MDI, uh, them and their TGP stack or live key stack could, whenever, uh, like, the servers are open for TGP practice, they could literally log in, set the key level to kind of, like, whatever they want, uh, or, or yeah. Oh, like, yeah. push mm -hmm. that key up to, like, whatever they want, and actually just do the dungeon, <laughs> but they don't. Yeah, it because it's miserable. It's miserable to like. It's not it fun. Sucks. Yeah, because it's it's it sucks. Fun. That's what I'm. That's what I'm, That's my message. Yeah, I'm not saying get on CR. I'm trying to say, well, because it sucks. It's not, yeah, yeah. It's, it's I do fun. think though that some like doing it. some grace for like if you know if you time half of your 16s, maybe the other half don't have to go down when you deplete them as long as you're timing some of them or something. Yeah. Um, going into more, I I really like the the call out about like the 20 line kind of being where we divide the. Mythic Plus is for gear versus Mythic Plus is for the Mythic Plus thing. How would you feel about something like we've nerfed Advisor Melandris below 20 keys, right? Like those sorts of things. Or do you feel like that would still cause a huge problem in terms of like the class balance uh, thing at the high end? So I've, I've brought up this idea before in a similar way. And I, I, basically the way I always refer to it is almost like a prestige level. We're like, let's say you do a 21 or you time a 20, you do the 20. Now the key turns into like, you know, a prestige one key, like whatever you okay. want to call it. And each level is handcrafted scale, including individual bo like boss abilities and stuff. Like they start with, okay, this is how, you know, the same scaling that it is. But now eventually this boss ability just starts one shotting everybody let's just start let's cap this boss ability at this amount of damage so that it's never going to one shot you but at the same time still offers a challenge for people doing a 15 or a 20 like for example the the zav stomp or whatever in in theater of pain or like you know what oh let oh, me try yeah. and think of a recent one uh the court of stars the i'm a Kutcha, that mini boss that's just going to start killing people at like four to five twenty six, and it goes off like every 20 seconds you can't just defensive everyone on a fortified so I think it's true. it would take a lot of work, and I don't even know if that's realistic, but it would be really cool. Yeah, like some abilities get their scaling reduced above 20, and some yeah. get it increased, depending on whether it's like one shots or like, yeah. This is the, that was the problem with Prideful too. Uh, Prideful was really cool and like up to plus 15s, and then it just got way out of hand, you know. If that yeah. was the case back then, that would have been so sick. I mean, then at that point, they're kind of just like designing the dungeons around. I think that that's actually the point where you start to get to the, the argument where it's like, oh, you're designing dungeons around the top. Yeah, that's why it's not feasible is because what yeah, percentage yeah, yeah. of players does 21 or higher keys? Do we yeah. really need 17 developers figuring out all the math right. and all this stuff? I would love that, but uh, it's I, not realistic, yeah. which is why, you know. That's fair. Very infrequently do I run into situations where I'm like, that was completely an unfair interaction and Blizzard needs to do something about this immediately because my experience is getting uh, tainted because of it. Very infrequently do I run Well, that's that. part of your job is just to fix it too, right? Yeah. Like, oh, run it. You now will run a tank trinket on your moonkin, or, you know, do this, or run <laughs> yeah, this yeah, yeah, exactly. stupid talent build. You know, like that's part of our job as a high key player to fix those spots anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Make gear swappable above plus 20s again. Holy shit. Oh, <laughs> that's a <okay>. tank. <laughs> uh, I don't even. A lot of the, the big thing with the gear swapping was whenever legendaries were a thing. That's what made. And it was like, it's almost like similar as like if you were able to swap talents in uh in plus in some reasonable way like i don't i don't think that you should be able to necessarily swap talents and i don't necessarily think that we need gear swapping since we don't have legendaries anymore yeah i mean it i would still like it but it would I, be I'm it would be a power level increase minority. but you would you would take a bunch you would have like you know a bunch of different trinkets that you would swap in every dungeon for the different pulls right you'd swap out when they're I mean, on cooldown you'd swap in a new on use for the next pull you, if you could swap your talent builds you would swap between aoe and 
and single target on all the bosses, right? Like you would do it. It would what? be a power level increase. You would you would be trolling a little bit not to if you were pushing, but I don't think it would be fun. I mean, swap on Groove Tour, swap off Groove Tour. <laughs> oh yeah, if I was playing with you, I would just have it on full time as well. You know, just uh. <laughs> It says ready. the guy who's leaving his mobs in the chant of the dead. Yeah, and hey, I'm, I wasn't <laughs> dying. It was fine. I thought I thought they were dying faster. I I they seemed like they were dying faster. I don't know what to tell you. What? Maybe it's a placebo effect. Okay. Anyways, we got a question now from uh, Andrew who says, "When you're pushing high keys as much as you do, how do you make goals for yourself to avoid burnout?" Um. All right. To I'm gonna I'm gonna answer it separately. If you're not having fun, don't play. Like. There, if you're if you're like, I want to be logged into WoW, but I don't really want to push keys right now. There's lots of you know, just mess around with random profession stuff. Like maybe play an alt. I think alt's probably the easiest one. Where if you're feeling, if you want to play WoW but you feel bored, that's kind of what you do is you play an alt. I think it's a little separate from goal setting because if you're feeling, you know, this isn't your well. Okay, for me it kind of is my job. But for most people, this isn't your job, right? You shouldn't be setting goals to try and make yourself work harder at World of Warcraft if you're not having fun. Yeah. Um, and I think the reverse happens when you're having fun. When you're, you know, how many people have you seen who are just like, oh, I got 2K IO, you know, and then, oh, now I'm going to quit. And then it's like, yeah, 2100. Okay, 2250. Okay, now 2500. That's what I'm going to quit. Okay, now I need the title. And it's like, if you're really having fun and you're enjoying who you're playing with, I feel like the goals and the progression sort of start naturally. So I think I would start first with, you know, are if you're not having fun, maybe take a break or do something else or maybe try a different character or play with different people maybe so that you would have fun. And then once you start having fun, I feel like the goals slide right into place. Dude, for me, I get like such a hit, hit of dopamine every single time. Like whenever you time a key, that's like, pretty score? high score yeah oh, it's not like score but it's like you just uh, feel the injection right into your veins whatever whenever you're timing right? like that Everyone level where that? it's like top 10 like world or some shit and you're like holy fuck that was a sick run and you're like damn i feel really good about this one great i feel feeling. like especially when you conquer something that you couldn't do before like yes. for instance well you you can say oh pugging a 20 ruby life pools is terrible but I bet if, you know, for those people who've messed up four in a row and then they time that fifth one, I bet it's like, you know, even for a pug, not, you know, you don't know anyone in the group. I bet that felt really good. I, I get big dopamine just timing 20s with pugs. Like 20s are hard, this expansion. I, I think More it's than your fun. normal group. That's the, maybe <laughs> yeah, maybe actually, timing yeah. 20s with pugs is the true end game content. I like, I timed yeah. a 21 Algathar with like two seconds last week and I was like, fuck yeah. The problem is, like, you don't you don't get the same sense of progression, right? Because it's like a different group, right? So it's just like, oh, yeah. this group is doing well. Then they all add you to damage, friends right? list, and yeah. they're all like five hundred yeah, you... IO score lower than you, and you're like, <sighs> <laughs> all right. Uh, next question comes from Cruel in Discord, who says this one's for Growl. Would you rather fight a tyrannical dorky or multiple fortified dorkies? But like, obviously, if he's tyrannical, he's a, a boss. Versus if he's uh, fortified, he's a trash mob. In real life, um, I'm not sure. I'm really not sure what the uh, what the question entails. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a, a play on the duck side ho duck sized horse horse sized duck thing. Tyrannical dorky or multiple fortified dorkies. Yeah, but he would be a trash mob if he was fortified, mm -hmm. so it wouldn't. It wouldn't. It's I not feel like, like dorky's already pretty tyrannical lately. <laughs> um, He's been oh. cracking the whip. Yeah, he said log on the evoker. I'm playing. Uh, demon hunter. I've heard. I've heard you say that uh, Dorky would be humbled if he healed this season. Is that a? Uh... Oh, hopefully he's not listening, dude. He, you literally said that to him in your stream today. Yeah, but he doesn't need to be reminded. Okay, like let the bears have short memory or whatever, and just let the stupid things that I say move on. Um, I do think healing this X back is pretty hard, and I do think that you know sometimes when he's like, like okay, one thing, one thing that I was thinking about is. Dude, thundering is actually kind of hard for a healer. Like traditionally, there has not been a most seasonal affixes in all of Shadowlands made your life easier as a healer, or did nothing. You know, think about like, like what seasonal affix did you have to think about during packs? I feel like as a healer, because healing is like you know the biggest brain, highest IQ, smartest person role. That you know sometimes my brain just hits the <laughs> limit, and uh -huh. I just start backpedaling into a swirly. And I know I was doing a VOD review today and it just happens sometimes where like I get thundering and then I have this curse and then these people are standing here and then 
then before you just you black out and all you hear is just dorky yelling crawl get out of the frontal and then you're dead so i don't know he uh, healing is hard i'm not saying that the other roles aren't hard too but I don't know. So I think, you know, let's just say this. I feel like Tyrannical Dorky, I got no chance. So I got to go with Fortified Dorkies. And yeah, I think Dorky would be humble. I think Dorky is a skilled gamer who would eventually become a great healer. But he would be like, okay, you're, you, okay, well, Dorky doesn't say I'm right very often. But he would, he would at least feel it in his heart that it was a little <laughs> harder than he thought it was going to be. Okay, this uh, actually ties pretty well into this other question we've gotten from Florida Man, who says, I've always enjoyed healing, but in Dragonflight, it makes me want to throw up tips to make it enjoyable again. And uh, yeah, I don't know, do you have, is this at all something that's resonated with you, or have you been enjoying healing more? No, and... yeah, there's, so there's two different types of healers. There's the healers that they just want to do a lot of healing and be either praised or flamed based off of the amount of healing. And there's the healers that just either... Okay, there's three types of healers. There's the healers that are huge monkeys that are just another DPS, but they can't get into a group, so they're playing healer. And okay. there's the healer that are just playing and they're just scared of their life because of something that happened to them when they were level 30 and they've just been abused as a healer their whole life and they just are scared of getting flamed. And I feel like for the scared healers and for the monkey healers, dungeons being really hard and people blaming them is not good. But I like it. I think there's... Dude, honestly, look... This is going to come off as toxic, but sometimes you just have to say toxic things. Healing might not be for everybody, man. You know, Moonkin's great right now. If your rest of Druid ain't working out for you, try and play some Moonkin. You might have a little bit better time this expansion. Come back when, uh, uh, you know, Dispriest with Kyrian Boon and Spires of Ascension is back on time walking. <laughs> what about you, Growl? Have you played any Boonkin? Uh, so Growl was actually initially a Boonkin. Okay. When I first started playing the game, Resto Shaman was my shaman, and then I made a Brewmaster was my monk prodigy, which eventually I decided I didn't. That's right. I, I you know I could have tanked. I just decided I didn't want to, and then I played uh, Miss Weaver. Then I made a Boomkin because that was like the whole idea, like oh growl owl, like you know every druid does that when they make their first druid. And so then I just I could have played Moonkin, but I decided I didn't want to, and I played Resto Druid. And then I haven't played Moonkin since. Although I've been told by famous Paladin player Drogo that I would actually highly enjoy Moonkin this patch, and Moonkin is one of the funnest DPS to play in keys right now. It is fun. <laughs> if you look for a range, it's pretty fun. Okay, our next question comes from Andy, who says, I feel like, or are affixes too big a part of the dungeons? Every week has some affix yes. that I'm not looking forward to playing with, <laughs> which I guess makes them balanced on some level. But with dungeons already swapping every season, do we need to have the current level of variation that affixes are providing? Dorky, I'm, I'm not sure how you feel about this one. Or not Dorky, uh, Growl. That's just the guy well, up. so right now this week, and now these are two affixes that aren't really that hard. So there's one affix called Quaking. And the Quaking affix makes you stand away from people. And there's another affix called Thundering, which makes it so you want to stand on top of people. And sometimes, well, you know, weird. and again, if, you, if you're either A, you know, ginormous brain, or B, you're playing a DPS or a tank, so your class doesn't take that much thinking, you can kind of, you know, <laughs> come up, realize that, you know, you're, you're, play, you're thinking 10 moves in a vet, ahead, but I'm already playing chess on my character. And so sometimes it just happens where it's quaking and it's thundering at the same time, and it's like, and on top of that, we're in a freaking dungeon, and there's so many dungeon things going on. Like, what if there's quaking and there's thundering, and there's swirlies, and I have to figure out where I gotta go, and it's like, I don't know, man, the dungeons are getting good. Dungeons are fun. Like, let the dungeons be dungeons. Like, I'm so sick of playing, yeah. like, musical chairs with thundering and quaking, and, like, and then you have explosive, which is just a week-long whack-a-mole. Like, I don't mind doing jobs and mechanics, but it just gets so repetitive and so, like, I don't know. I if I wanted to, like, multitask, I would play, like, an RTS or whatever. Like, it almost feels too multitasky from a from like a healer perspective i think you're dead on I, I think especially the problem is just thundering like how impactful it is in dungeons and how it interacts with everything going on like really? uh, i think jb also tweeted this the other day but it was like uh everyone's favorite affix seasonal affix was encrypted because it was like minimum impact but it gave you something kind of cool and like thundering gives you something a little cooler probably like it's 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 not more interesting but it's more damage than what encrypted was but it's just way more taxing on your brain 
to me it's just too punishing it's just too yeah. punishing i said i've been saying you know I, yeah i've been saying this forever but it's like okay you mess up the thundering oh man now you get a fat damage reduction and you're doing minus 75 percent damage for 10 seconds you know like that's still gonna feel bad but it's not just gonna immediately freaking wipe your key and sometimes you yeah. again you just end up in these situations where you have like for like one boss that we've been chain wiping to this week is wise mari the first boss of temple of the jade serpent and it's really? like that boss is not supposed to be hard but it's like there's Dude. thundering and there's pools and there's quaking and we just blow all of ourselves up and then we're trying to stack and it's like this Dude, should storming? not be this complicated storming, storming as well on that boss world. yeah Oh, yeah, I don't know. It just feels like when you're wiping to that boss, I feel like you're like, all right, these Avexes might be a little bit too much if they're killing people on this boss. For me, the issue with the Avexes have been, we've had them for so long, they've started to feel like no longer fun. No longer, they're, they're not fresh. They've been around for so long that they're, it's not new in any meaningful way. Like the seasonal Avexes I actually have less of an issue with. And I do understand that like the issue with uh, Thundering for some people is that it's too impactful. Um, that you have to be proactive about it. But I think that for me, like the biggest issue is like in something that I would maybe like to see for 11.0 is like a like a full affix revamp of some sort. Try to get completely new affixes. Like no more will stay. I smell it coming. I feel like, again, I'm not going to speak for Blizzard because I genuinely don't know. But I got the vibe from what they talked about in interviews and from what I saw in the PTR was they wanted to do affix changes, but maybe things, you know, like, yeah, you know the expansion release date was maybe a little faster than you know all of the people who are working on this stuff, and they had to revamp all these dungeons and stuff. So I kind of got the vibe. I, I got the vibe that that's next on their list. I think is affixes. For a long time, we just kind of complained about affix balance parity, right? Like alf affixes uh, relative to one another were not balanced, but right now the affixes are more balanced than they've realistically ever been to one another. Um, there's no weeks yeah. that are like outrageously except maybe uh, bolstering. They're, yeah, I mean, bolstering's not great, but it's not like a massive outlier relative to some of the other options. And they like changed bolstering a couple times to make it more reasonable, but it still isn't fun. And that's like let's the take, issue. That let's I'm take some into. time to call out those people too. The people that, oh, I hate push week. Whoa, oh, whoa. I hate volcanic. I hate these weeks that are so easy. Well, here you go. Now, every week is grievous, explosive, bursting, double tyrannical. Like, this is what you, when, when, when you said, oh, I want, you know, when people say they don't like push weeks or they don't like easy weeks, like, well, they're not going to make every affix super easy. So what did yeah. you think was going to happen? Like, I don't know. A lot of people complained about the push week dynamic or that some weeks were easier. Like, I didn't think personally that some weeks were easier was that big of a problem. And not, well, I mean, I, I guess it depends. I don't know. What do you guys like? What do you guys I, think? Are you happier now that the weeks are more? I, I think. I'm way I think happier. Yeah. Yeah. To, fortified tyrannical i like that the big problem in bfa was every tyrannical week was dead you yeah. never played mm -hmm. on tyrannical weeks unless you were like the top chinese team which still beat everybody on that week anyway but i think now that you want to play on tyrannical and learn tyrannical then i think make affix is easier i think there might have been a perception issue too which might have been one of the bigger things is like because we weren't playing Tyran, it just seemed like it was that much harder. But then once we started to get forced to play Tyran due to how the uh, scoring system works, people were more willing to kind of like dip their toes in. Because you, if you remember, there was like only that Chinese team that would ever play Tyran before the scoring system got implemented. And they were always putting up like decent runs on Tyran. And now that everybody's doing Tyran, you, you see some of the top, I want to say the, the absolute top keys are always done on Tyran, but you see some of like really impressive runs done on different affix sets yeah, the old four tyrant thing is great like i think it makes more classes more viable for mythic plus in general because like uh tank yeah, that alone, shaman. i think a lot of tanks are actually better than pro warrior on tyrannical weeks right now pro warrior is still the best on four but i think like demon hunter and monk is just straight up better than warrior sometimes on tyrannical yeah except they do love to put randomly some dungeons with a lot of spell reflectable bosses still which uh that is a, a big thing for the warrior. Keep him in the in the hunt. They need about that class True. though. Th that block value thing. Ignore pain. Back to fifty five percent. You know, fifty percent. Uh, not enough. Need need a little bit more. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. We'll do one more of these questions. Uh, actually, we've kind of done all of these, haven't we? Um, maybe Tettles, is there any anything that we wanted to specifically talk about that we missed? Because uh, I skipped over a couple of these along the way. 
Oh, how have you felt about healer weeks regarding some map fixes? Because I saw some people talking about like uh, every week feels like a healer week now with the amount of involvement that you that you have to do. Yeah, well, that just sort of happened, right, with the removal of Necrotic, which Necrotic was almost like an opposite healer week, where yeah, once your tank got to so many stacks, you got the you had to sign the contract that said he doesn't get any more healing. And then inspiring, which again, almost very little that you do as a, as a healer for inspiring. So only naturally that when you remove two non-healer affixes that you get all healer ones. I think, yeah. The problem is just, they're just so draining. Like explosive yeah. is just so draining. I feel like if exp the problem that I have with explosive is that it's just so, it takes your globals and it's, especially for pugs, it's really hard to communicate when you're in trouble. Like I play with such crazy good players that it's not, it, like it's draining for me when I have Junkrat who's actually helping me kill and I have my whole team which I can just say in voice help me right now. But like I don't even know what you do in a pug without voice. What's in some of these polls? Uh, I think Grievous. I don't like Grievous because it creates bad habits for healers. I like the idea of increasing the healing check. I don't like the idea that okay, my party's at ninety percent health, but they're fine but I have to play whack-a-mole because they're going to keep dying unless I heal them. Like, I think mm -hmm. it's a good thing for healers to learn that, okay, my party's fine. Like let their leech kick in, let their regen kick in. That's like an important skill as a healer to have. And grieve and grievous sort of throws that on its head and is creates bad habits. So those are two affixes that I get frustrated with that I find are problematic. I don't really mind bursting. I don't really mind a lot of the other ones. They're kind of whatever. I mean, they're not my favorite. Like obviously bolstering is whatever, but only other thing I had written down was something about lust, um, and like how lust is like really defining this meta game, where we have basically two dynamics, where it's like non-lust healers, so you know, Rest of Druid and Holy Paladin are the two primary non-lust healers, and then you have obviously Preservation Evoker, and then so it's like you have to play completely different comps, like you have like Enhancement Shaman is now seeing play because the um, because of the non-lust healers in a lot of these groups. Not Enhance is also good, so you might. You, um, I like it both, when but... DPS balance is good. Yeah. When DPS balance is good and I can say, well, like, for instance, me, right? Oh, there's an enhanced shaman in the group. I'll play my druid. Or there's an enhanced shaman in the group. Let's invite a druid or we don't need an evoker. Mm -hmm. The problem is when class balance is bad and you need to play two rogues and a windwalker, it's like, well, okay, evoker's the only healer for the entire expansion now. Well, actually, a, a druid wouldn't be bad there. The one thing for druid is they got Mark of the Wild. Mark of the Wild is actually really, really strong. But I think for other non-Druid healers, yeah, it hurts them a lot when class balance isn't good and they can't, like, fit in. I mean, even some things, like, for example, Temple of the Jade Serpent, the last boss, like, having a priest for that boss kind of shreds. Like, having Mass Dispel or whatever, being able to... Oh, I yeah. feel like a lot of healers have niches. Like, a Shaman, now that Quarter Stars and Shadow Moon is, like, so easy, like, having a Shaman to just blast and do 50k overall is actually pretty good, you know? Like, I think yeah. a lot of the healers bring something in certain dungeons with all the changes. Yeah, the Shaman have the Lust as well, which uh, could be a relevant right. thing as they start getting better in the meta too, so. Start getting invited and people start gearing them. Yeah. Dude, I brought in a, a Shaman from my guild into a 26 Shadow Moon last night and we barely missed it, but he healed every boss on Tyrannical. Yep. I was impressed. All right. Our final question comes from Maliand in Discord. It says, Are the Halls of Valor trash debuffs that tanks can dodge by movement? A skill expression or a gimmick? There's actually a lot of this tank backpedalable mechanic, this expansion as well. Uh, I guess this one's probably more for Trell than for for Growl. Trell, how do you feel about these these uh, tank mechanics that you can beat with the S key? Um, I think they're good, but they need to be improved to be more intuitive. Like They need to show how far their range actually is in some way so that these players can actually figure it out besides randomly listen to a Titan Forge podcast episode where one of us talk about it. Like, there's no way you're going to find that out unless you accidentally do it. And you're like, wait, I didn't take damage there. I didn't get one shot by that literal one mil tank hit that I can just backpedal out of. <laughs> that breath from that blizzard in uh, Azure yeah. Vault. Yeah, the breath from the lieutenant that walks around the second boss area or the dragon in, in the first area of Halls of Valor or every single mob in Halls of Valor that has like a two yard frontal at the tank. Yeah. It's weird. All right. I think that's about it for our questions this week. Uh, Growl, thank you for coming on to the show where people can find you, of course. Yummy TV, kind of in all places, right? Yep. Uh, mostly Twitter, Twitch, YouTube. 
those are the three and then other stuff i actually i don't even know if i do anything else so yep that uh, is TikTok. me thanks for having me i appreciate it sorry i didn't jack the healer pov but you know listen into listen into three non-healers every week sometimes i gotta come in here and just complain hey, that's <laughs> why we get you in uh all right we will really quickly thank the patreon supporters of the show and then we will get out of here those lovely patrons include paul PSA for the hunters out there. Salvo is a button you need to use now, or at least macro now. Uh, condolences to the French hunters out there trying to figure out how to macro salve into salve. I don't understand this. I'm trying to figure out. I think it's because they're named like the same thing or something like that in French. So, oh, okay. I see. Um, I found a new disconnect bug. Shadow Strike from Stealth. If you want to clip, if you clip the wrong frame, crashes the game. Dude, earlier this week, it was like a feral druids out of stealth were crashing on rake or something was uh, there was it was oh, a lot yeah. of stuff uh, in combat stealth as well uh like there was some stuff with like meld and vanish in combat that was also crashing people's games never nude Ja, king of skills dratnus dino pillow chrome trekkie chewy trell is taken so i'm unsubscribing for patreon zip xx <laughs> salty zenny necros sinmora tank dill nevuk <laughs> Eevee, Unholy DKs Rise Up, No Trick, I Forgot I Was Subbed Here, Dimat, Loofer, Rework Mistweaver, PSA, There's a Sale Coming Up at Lego Stores, People Will Be Lined Up for Blocks, Trell gave away his... <laughs> Trell gave away his Best in Slot Ring, Congratulations to the Happy Couple, uh, Delete Gaming, Gallic, Brusive, Dratna Shrouds or Fist, Heritage Armor, Suit, and Pogchamp, M Sanity, Xena, uh, Rogue is now good enough for Prog, still bad enough to be set for SLG, Bless Up, Red color, youtube.com slash workbreaker, oh. alphabet soup, druid friends of evolved gaming. Oh, Tettles, did, did you forget to do an update? Uh, no, I think he I think he changed his name, but oh. I think I fucked it up. Oh no. Oh no, it's fine. Don't worry. All right, number one Simpski for Trelski. Lurka still manages to make raid and key groups while being on the other side of the planet. What's your excuse? Milk, 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 Zife, Pone, Windwalker Monks deal with nurse by rolling with the punches. The real meta was the friends we made along the way, the marsh hare, Vale Strider's Far. Trell has found a new ring of peace. R.I.P. Monk and congratulations, bro. Oh, there's no way the monk has to go. It's it's good, I'm sure. Big head, That's small true. brain. Nardar TV is back and ready to press Starfall. Agitar, Juniper. Maybe I'm raiding this week, or maybe I died in the Texas blizzard. Who knows? You guys got a little blizzard going down there? I don't know what a blizzard. We got like three inches of snow. Oh, <laughs> nasty. This week, These Bremdar people. killed himself only 24 times through Skyreach. Rat run. Where are you? And I'm so sorry. Shansi, getting dismounted in dog water because you have baby legs. First uh, first little pool in Shadow and Burial Grounds, Goblin POV. Do you really get... What? You got dismounted there, but you swim. It's really annoying. Yeah, that's so annoying. Uh, and then resubscribed to congratulate Trell on his mythic engagement parse. Thank you all for the support over on the yeah, Patreon. Thanks, y'all. thanks again, Growl, for, uh, for coming on the show this week. We will be back next week unless we, like we did last we'll be week. Back next week. Don't actually, yeah, we'll be back next week, almost certainly, unless we aren't. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Bye. All right, later.